Hello everyone, Bruno Luce here with JLB Productions. Thanks for joining me. I got an interesting story for you in this video. And Sunday of this week, I'm playing bass at my church. Now, when I play bass at church, I play a passive bass, usually a Fender Precision, sometimes a five string jazz. And I use a radial a J48, this one here, which as you all know, requires phantom power. Now the setup at my church is that we have a bass amp, which is a larger version of the one that you see here. The one at church is the 15 inch version. This is the eight. And as you can see, this particular bass amp has a built-in DI. Now, I don't really like using that built-in DI because to my ear, uh, it sounds rather indistinct and also quite noisy, right? As a budget instrument amplifier DIs typically are. So what I'll do is I'll unplug the line from the DI and I'll plug it into the J48. And then what I'll do is I'll ask the person on duty to switch on phantom power to that line, right? It's normally off because the instrument amplifier DI doesn't need phantom and in some cases it can actually damage them. So on Sunday what happened was they switched on phantom power or they said they did and there was no phantom power reaching the radial J48. Now as you guys know the J48 has a small LED here that comes on momentarily when you press the low cut switch. Um, they don't want to leave the LED on permanently because they want all available power going to the circuitry in the J48. That's how they get the headroom that the DI has. And that's also the reason why they chose not to power it off of batteries, right? Because batteries, you get sag and the voltage drops over time. But I couldn't use my J48 because there was no phantom power. And so what's going on here? So what do I do? I walk to the back. I confirm that yes, phantom is actually on. Phantom is on to that channel. And it was, but... For some reason, the phantom power wasn't making it through the mic line to my DI on the other end. So at this point, time was getting short and I said, okay, let's cut our losses. Let's switch to another channel. And we did, and we did the service. Everything worked great. Now, after the service, being a sound engineer, I want to troubleshoot, right? So I go to the back and I pull the mixer out so that I can see the connectors on the back and I immediately notice that the channel 14 connector which is the channel that we use for bass is different to the rest as you can see in the picture the rest are black and have numbers on them this one was silver with no number so what that told me was that there was something in between the mixer and the mic point that was preventing the phantom power getting through. I traced the line and lo and behold, what did I find? An isolation transformer. Now, as we all know, phantom power will not pass through a transformer, right? Only AC current will pass through a transformer Phantom power is DC, therefore it gets blocked. And this explained the mystery, right? Um, at first I was thinking, you know, has phantom power failed on this channel? Now that is very, very unusual. With uh, mixers, typically phantom power is either working for everything or it's not working. It's very, very uncommon that it fails on that one channel. Either the channel goes out completely or it's 100% working. So how did this isolation transformer get there? Uh, I did a little bit of calling around this week and I discovered that it had been inserted to reduce hum and noise from the bass amplifier DI. <laughs> In my opinion, that's called chasing your tail, right? Um, why not just 
use a high quality external DI to begin with. Uh, yes, it does involve one additional cable, right? Uh, you need to loop out from the DI and into the amp. Uh, and into the amp. So, I guess that's just how they like to do things. So what do we learn from this example? Well, a couple of things. The first thing is that it's important to have spare channels, right? We all know you've got to have spare mics, spare DIs, spare cables. But it's also important to have spare channels on both your mixer as well as on your stage snake if you use one, right? So if your show is a 16 channel show, use a 20 or 24 channel mixer, right? And it'll save you time when there's no time to troubleshoot, you move to a good known working channel and you just roll with it that way. Uh, the other thing that we learned is that you cannot assume that the line is good between a mic point and a mixer, right? Most of the time, the mic points are plugged directly into the mixer and there's nothing in between. In this case, that was not the case. So you need to trace the line. You need to start at the last known working point and work your way through the signal chain until you find a problem. Now, if I had skipped the line and tried to troubleshoot starting at the input to the mixer, I wouldn't have found the problem because the problem would have been upstream between the mic point and the mixer itself. So I hope this has been useful. Um, you know, I've been doing sound uh, many years now, but you always learn and you always come across new situations. If you like my videos, uh, please subscribe to my channel and consider becoming a patron on patreon.com. Links to all of these are available in the video description below, as well as in the information bar, which you can access by clicking in the top right corner of your screen. This is Bruno Luce for GLB Productions and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.